Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've got an update for you all on the status of our fight to stop over-the-air broadcast TV encryption. I still can't watch a couple of my local networks here because my broadcasters encrypted them. We've been trying to stop that. Thousands of you have written into the FCC to express your displeasure with what the broadcasters are doing. I've got news today that will encourage a lot of you and also anger a lot of you. So why don't we get into it right now? Now, before we dive into the details here, why don't we do a quick recap about what this issue is all about? I am still encountering people who have no idea that broadcast TV is getting encrypted. And with millions cutting the cord, they're looking for alternative ways to get their local news and information. And this is really important to know about. So my journey in all of this is that 11 years ago, I was paying too much on my cable bill, mostly for rental equipment to tune into the digital cable signals. So I went out and found this product called an HD Home Run. And back then I had uh, less gray in my hair, as you can see. And what this device is, is a TV gateway device. You plugged your cable television into the box and then any device in your house with a screen could tune into the cable channels. And I was able to get rid of all of my Comcast equipment. This thing saved me thousands of dollars over its lifespan before I cut the cord completely here at the house a few months ago. Now there are also HD home run devices like this one that can tune over the air television from an antenna. And like the cable version, you plug your antenna in here and then you connect it to your network and then you've got the ability to watch television on just about anything that you've got with a screen that can run an app. And in fact, they allow multiple apps to tune into television. So here is my iPhone currently looking at my CW affiliate. I can push this here and jump over to ABC, but the experience is the same on my television as well. So to some degree, it's like booting up Netflix. I can select Netflix or YouTube to watch on my television, or I can load up the HD Home Run app here or Plex and do the same thing. And this is how people want to watch television these days, except for the fact that when I tune into an encrypted channel now, look what happens. I can't watch it because the broadcaster has applied restrictions that prevent me from being able to tune into that station using this hardware. Now, we've been fighting this for quite a while, and the broadcasters have been accusing us vloggers of dr drumming up fake support for this issue and everything else, but that's not the case. Now, I have uh, been sponsored by the makers of this box in the past. However, I have not done a sponsorship with them in quite some time. The effort that I've been making, the effort that the Antenna Man has been making, the effort that others have been making on YouTube is organic. We are upset. We are representing consumers who are also upset who have been using these devices for, in some cases, 20 years and are not able to enjoy television the way they have been enjoying it before. And the worst part is, is that these restrictions are being done by the broadcast industry and not by the FCC, who requires these broadcasters to uh, provide this service in exchange for having access to the spectrum. Now, the uh, HD Home Run box here is not the only one in the market. You've got Tableau, which is very popular. Tableau is owned by a broadcast conglomerate, and even they can't come up with an ATSC3 solution. So it's been extremely frustrating, especially because this DRM thing happened about a month or two after I went through the expense of putting an antenna up on my roof. So I'm just really ticked off about this. HD Home Run is not you know, the puppet master behind the scenes. This is all us doing this. And I know all of you who submitted your responses to the FCC are not astroturf as the broadcasters accused us of being. And when the FCC asked for public comment on all of this, uh, they brought up all of the issues that have been raised by us over the last couple of months. And now that brings us to the update on what's going on because the FCC is continuing to ask the broadcasters about why they're getting so many complaints about this issue. And so the other day, the uh, Pearl TV Group, which is a membership organization of broadcasters, sat down with the FCC's media bureau to talk about why we are so upset and what they can do to resolve the issue. As you'll see in a minute, they have no interest in resolving the issue and spread more false information, which we'll get to in a minute. But this is the same group that said we have to uh, encrypt TV because there's all sorts of deep fakes out there and hackers that might 
uh, prevent people from getting their TV signals, but nothing could be further from the truth. We all agree that this argument they made a year or two ago was complete bogus. And the real reason why broadcasters want to make it inconvenient to enjoy television in your home on any screen you have is because they get so much money from these broadcast retransmission fees that get charged to streaming providers and to cable providers. When I cut the cord, I was paying $36 a month just for the local TV portion of my cable. All the other stuff was on top of that. So that is what they're trying to protect. In many cases, it's more than half of their annual revenue now coming from broadcast retransmission fees. So the good news is that the FCC is continuing to question broadcasters about this issue, which means that they're still thinking about our concerns as they put together the final decision that they're about to make about this transition. Does it mean we're winning? Who knows, but it does at least give me some encouragement that we are top of mind because they have heard a lot from us about our concerns. What's going to anger you though is what the broadcasters said in response. So I don't know if this law firm was meeting with the FCC along with the Pearl TV representatives, but this is what this law firm sent as what's called an ex parte letter after the meeting was held. And they claim that the root cause about why the HD home run device is not allowed to decrypt content is because it has a chip inside made by Huawei Technologies, which is on the FCC's blacklist for telecommunications infrastructure. It's questionable if this is even applicable to a consumer device because these things are not telecommunications infrastructure. And even if it was applicable, the device was certified by the FCC before their order came down on these companies which means that they were essentially grandfathered in. So there really isn't an issue here. And it's clearly just grasping for some reason as to why the HD home run device in particular hasn't been approved. It doesn't though answer the question why none of the other gateway devices out there have been approved either because there is not a single approved gateway device like the HD home run or the Tableau that can decrypt ATSC3 DRM signals. Now, I also want to point out here that they continue to arrogantly dismiss us as a, quote, relatively small number of consumers, unquote. Meanwhile, we are their most vocal and active viewers who want to watch what they have to offer. We're kind of, of a dying breed out here that wants to watch over the air TV. Uh, so you would think they'd want to work with us to talk about the benefits of it, but no, we are just a relatively small group of people that should be ignored. So why don't we dive into the facts here because they did actually mislead the commission in this letter in a number of areas. But first, let's make one thing clear. Broadcasters do not have the authority to regulate devices that tune into over-the-air television. We talked about the AM radio mandate the other day. AM radio broadcasters don't get to pick which radios can tune into their channels and which ones can't. It is an FCC authority to certify devices for the market, which this device has certification for, along with every other device that you use to watch television. They don't have the authority. But one thing this letter makes very clear is that they are selectively applying these illegal regulations that they've put into place. And how do we know that? Well, if we look at their letter and we go down to the footnote, they point out that not only is Huawei on this FCC blacklist, which again is questionable as to whether or not it even applies to this product, but they also mention that Huawei is on the Commerce Department blacklist too. And as I've been going through all of these boxes that I have here, I've been looking for their countries of origin. So we have uh, this device again from HD Home Run, designed in the United States, software written in the United States, custom operating system made in Taiwan, not China. I've got a few other devices here. This one is the ADTH box that the broadcasters are pushing. They don't even put a country of origin on the bottom here, but when I took it apart, its motherboard was made in China. We also have this one, the Zapper box, which is another one that the broadcasters like to talk about. It's a high quality product. I think it's designed in the US, but guess where it's made? China. And then we have something else, the GT Media X1 player. Now this one is a Chinese designed box. It is made in China as well, and it ships here. You'll note though in their marketing that it is DRM certified by the A3SA, which is the only authority that can grant these boxes the ability to tune into encrypted channels. 
And I took it apart a little bit earlier. So here we go. I'll just take it apart again here for you. And this is the motherboard here. It wasn't too hard to get into it. And if I can separate the uh, board out, actually, let me show you here. Uh, there's a chip here that I noticed. And when I looked at the label on the chip, I was surprised to see that it is running with something that is on the Commerce Department blacklist, a YMTC chip, which the Biden administration added to the blacklist back in 2022. This device is not illegal to be sold here in the US, even with that chip on the blacklist, for the same reason why Silicon Dust can sell their HD home run device on the market here. And that letter and this chip here show us that they are being selective about the types of devices that they're approving and even perhaps the manufacturers behind those devices. This entire process of approval is opaque. It's all under NDA. There's no transparency. And clearly here, they're applying the rules differently based on the device type and who is making it. And I want to clear up some facts here because guess what? The HD Home Run is a certified next-gen TV device. They went through the process to get their device certified so they can put the next-gen TV logo on there. Nobody had a problem with the device when they went through that process. They knew all of the components that were inside. Their certification process is far more stringent than the FCC's is, so they know what they were dealing with. The HD Home Run does not decrypt content on device either because those are the rules. They have to pass the encrypted signal to a player and that player is supposed to encrypt it all the way to the television. So they are not even decrypting anything. So their uh, content is protected inside of the box and all it's doing is passing the signal through. That's not the case, by the way, with this one. This is a tuning device, which means the signal gets decrypted inside. And so if that chip was up to something, they would have a significant security issue with that. One other thing here, the HD Home Run did receive H3SA and Widevine certification anyhow, because at one point they were considering having devices like a gateway encrypt on device and they changed their minds later. And there's a whole big technical write-up that uh, Nick from Silicon Dust sent to me when I questioned him about this. But what I did get from him as well was something a little simpler to understand, which is this email that he received back in 2022 approving the HD home run device for DRM decryption if they decided to go the route of on-device decryption. So here you go. And Widevine is the provider of this. Uh, that is a Google company, by the way. The broadcasters have declared war on Google as well, but they are using them for encryption. And the only way he could have received these security keys was to have the blessing of the A3SA security authority. So he got that. So essentially, this HD home run box met all of the certification criteria. They got certified as a next-gen TV device. They were approved to decrypt A3SA DRM encrypted channels on device if the industry decided to go in that direction. But still, the industry has not allowed gateway devices and then comes up with some bogus letter from a lawyer that comes up with some other reason why they aren't allowed on the market. It feels to me like they're trying to run this company out of business along with all of the other companies that are in this space. It's not a big industry, but they do have a right to exist and have protections as a private industry that this larger conglomerate is trying to shut down. Now, I did reach out to the A3SA, which is the organization responsible for issuing the certifications for DRM on these over-the-air TV boxes. And I was curious because Nick Kelsey, the CEO of Silicon Dust, told me that he has no record of any communication from A3SA about this chip being the problem. The first time he heard of this issue, he says, is when the filing hit the FCC on Friday. And by the way, Pearl also CC'd all the industry press at the same time they sent the letter into the Federal Communications Commission. So I was curious, was there ever a communication sent to Nick Kelsey? And if so, when was it sent? And this was their response. They said, Huawei has been on a restricted component list with the US government for more than five years. Silicon dust cannot claim ignorance of US law. And I pushed them a little bit further, asking them, Where's the letter and why were they issued security keys if this was a problem? And what they sent back was this. Silicon Dust has long been aware of this concern, so it's not new information to them. I've also asked them to give me some record of it. They still haven't responded to that. 
and I asked them about the GT Media box, and this is all I've got from them right now for comment. If they provide more after this video is published, I will do a follow-up. And if we're really concerned about security here, why don't we go back to this box that they did certify to decrypt content. If they're worried about their signals getting hijacked, maybe they should be concerned with the fact that the GT Media box has an Android TV security patch level that was four years out of date when it shipped. Now, in fairness, this company has rectified that. At least they told me they did. But still, this is how it was shipping to con consumers. It hasn't sold all that well, so I'm sure there's a lot of units out there shipping with an update or lack of an update to the security patch level. Additionally, the way you put apps on this thing is to sideload them. It didn't even have the proper Google Play Store. This thing is a gaping security risk if you're trying to protect DRM protected content. Even one of the broadcaster's flagship tuning devices, the Zinwell box, also had a security patch level that was grossly out of date and required initially that users sideload updates onto the box to keep it up to date. They've since rectified that as well, but this was what they initially put out on the market. It just doesn't seem like they were all that serious about protecting content while banning these gateway devices from having a shot on the market. And what about this law firm that posted this letter? Well, I did a little research on what they're up to. As you can see, they've got offices in Beijing and Shanghai. And if you've got a problem with uh, the US government banning your company, they'll come and represent you. So they are actually the law firm that is representing TikTok. They also represented Xiaomi and got them off a government blacklist. These guys are the experts on blacklists. And I think that was probably why they felt a letter from this firm might have some weight, but their client unfortunately did not give them all of the information that they would need to make a better argument. Now let's get on to this topic about a small number of consumers. What we're seeing from Amazon sales data is that consumers prefer gateway devices. We've talked before that if you go on Amazon and search for ATSC3 tuner, the HD Home Run box is the best selling box on the market despite the DRM issues. If you look for just any TV tuner, the top sellers are the Tableau boxes. They occupy three out of the top four spaces there. So clearly consumers want to not have to get yet another TV box. They want something that will work with the TV box or smart TV they already have. The HD Home Run does that. The Tableau does it as well. And as a reminder, Tableau is owned by Scripps, which is a broadcast conglomerate I believe they're one of the members of Pearl TV as well. And they had an ATSC3 product on the roadmap that they took off the roadmap, likely because of the difficulties in making that device work with the DRM. It's not just Silicon Dust getting locked out here, but they happen to be the only gateway product on the market and the only gateway that has been certified by Next Gen TV, but is still not permitted to work. Now, one other thing I wanted to bring up here is that the broadcasters are accusing Silicon Dust of misleading customers and that Sony and Samsung proudly offer devices that don't contain prohibited components and work just fine. But the reality is, is that their vision of the future is that you have to run antenna cables into every room into one of these boxes or you buy a TV with an ATSC3 tuner in it. They have no vision for gateways, which is what, again, most consumers want. But let's be clear, they make it very clear that there are some issues tuning into DRM content. If you go on their Amazon listing here, it is front and center on the product bullet points here. And there are two other mentions in the product detail page. And of course, we've been making enough noise about this. And anytime somebody is researching one of these products, they're hearing about the DRM issues. So it's no mystery to consumers that broadcasters are locking them out. Last thing I want to point out here is that the broadcasters talk about millions of people having access to ATSC3. How many of them are actually watching it? Because the best selling ATSC3 tuner is the HD Home Run Box. And if we are the only ones watching unencrypted ATSC3 television, I suspect that the viewer numbers uh, by percentage by device are probably much higher in the favor of a gateway device than a dedicated tuner or television. So that is where things are at. I'd love to hear what you have to say down in the comments section, but clearly they are looking for reasons to continually deny gateway usage. I don't think if they change chips, if it would actually change the dynamic here, they'll probably come up with some other reason, 
but it looks as though the fight will continue, and I'll have more as it develops. I'll talk to you soon. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.